Hey you guys, Portia here with Mommy's a Crafter. Um, so I'm really hoping everything will line up here with the voiceover because I originally had um, commentated while I was taking the video, but then <laughs> I have kids, so you know, <laughs> it didn't work out. Um, but here we go. Today um, I'm going to show you guys how to do this little lettering project. Um, I actually posted this in the March lettering um, challenge uh, hosted by Hand Lettered and Loved. Um, and you guys really loved it. So I figured I'd do a tutorial on how to recreate the look. So um, it'll be just like a letter along with me. Um, yeah, and I will link all of her um, info down in the description. Um, hand lettered and love to her on Facebook and um, her Instagram if I can get a link for that. So um, I hope you guys enjoy and I hope you follow along. Well, let's jump in here. So first I'm going to start with a new canvas and I always just choose screen size. It's just what I choose. I don't know why, but <laughs> it is what it is. Um, and I already saved the photo that I'm going to be using. Um, it's just a Google photo, like a stock image. Um, so yeah, just something simple. Um, I just searched rhubarb, strawberry rhubarb pie and saved the photo to my camera roll. Here we're going to add the photo, insert from camera roll. And then I'm going to fit to screen or fit to canvas. And deselect. Then we're going to create a color palette. So here I'm going to show you how to create um, a new color palette. Here's one I made before for. Um, peach and then there's one below I think that was a key lime um, the theme this month for her lettering challenge is pies in case you can't tell <laughs> and so um, I'd already created palettes there for those two but I'm gonna show you how to make one for this strawberry rhubarb so we're gonna click on this little um, circle here between our two um, sliders and it's gonna give you this little uh, selector then you can just drag it around to whatever color you like. Once you find one, you click on your color, you go to your palettes tab, then you click on a blank spot. When you want to make a, choose your next color, you're going to go back and click on that little circleish square icon again. Choose your color, select your um, empty spot. I think I'm going to end up choosing five colors just to get like a good um, palette. That way I can choose what might work best for the project. And then I'm going to choose one more like reddish color. <clears throat> I think what I was saying there was that I did not want to choose a white because um, the white is really like already overpowering in the photo, so I don't want to add any more um, white. I definitely didn't want to do any lettering in white. Alright, now that we've got all of our colors picked, we are ready to choose a color and then start lettering. First, we're going to always make a new layer. Now, in the end, I ended up not liking this step, but I'm going to show it to you guys anyways because it does create kind of a cool effect. So I did end up putting a layer over top, a white, just a white layer, and then um, select and then fill layer, and then I turned down the opacity um, just because it kind of makes your lettering stand out a little bit more. But in the end, I ended up not liking it, and so um, I do delete that layer at the end of the video but um, I'll just go ahead and explain it so that way 
if you do choose to do that. So here is a layer on top of that, and that is going to be our lettering layer. <clears throat> Excuse me, my allergies are like, ah, oh, killing me today. So now we're ready to start lettering. We're going to go and choose our color. And our brush and my favorite brush right now is this mermaid monoline brush that I got on um, I think I got it on creative market um, but I'll definitely put the link for that down below it actually was a bundle I think with like six brushes um, and we are going to make sure that our streamline there is turned all the way up Now, um, lately when I've been using the Mermaid Monoline, I've been sticking between like 28 and 35-ish. I think I ended up going with 35 um, size for this project. But just play around with it. Sometimes I like it big and chunky, sometimes I like thinner. Um, just whatever you're in the mood for. Okay, so we've got everything lettered, and now we're going to um, give it a little bit of a cool effect by doing some erasing. So I'm going to stay with my um, mermaid monoline, but we're going to use it to erase instead of write, and um, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller too. So. Um, I'm going to show you that now. We're just going to go in and go to the eraser tab and make sure that we're on that mermaid brush. We're going to turn the streamline down because I don't want it to be correcting my curves and all that. I want it to um, erase where I'm telling it to, not where it thinks I want to go. So, um, yeah, we'll turn that streamline down and then we're going to turn our size down. But the, the way we're going to look at this is um, we're going to erase all the parts that overlap. So let's say um, up here on my S, how we, when we're writing it, we start here and we go down and then over this last part here actually is going to be going over top of this part. So... We're going to erase on either side of our overlapping line. Um, it just gives it this really cool effect. I don't, I like accidentally stumbled on this when I was um, trying to do some shadowing, like learn some shadowing. Uh, and I really loved it. So yeah, now I'm just in the mood of adding it to um, lettering projects. It just gives it this really cool pop. 
So um, we're going to do it on either side of our overlapping line. And um, see up here how it did that auto shape. I like using that a lot, especially if I'm following a straight line. Um, because then it gives me just that really smooth um, erased line. And um, it's really easy to follow. Now see this little area right here where the S meets the T. I didn't quite um, connect them all the way when I was lettering it. So I'm going to go back to my brush really quickly. Make sure I'm on the right color. And just fill that little gap in. Just a super easy fix. And then it just looks a lot cleaner. Going to make sure you go back to your eraser. Now see how our T, we start with that straight line down and then our cross is after. So we're going to erase um, the under parts of our crossover. It really just turns out like really super cool in the end. Just gives it more of a dimension. Now here look on our little flourish. And this part is going to come over, so we're going to erase these parts. Now you'll see here on the A <clears throat> in a second, I'm going to go back to the A, um, I kind of do it a little bit of the opposite of what I've been telling you too. So I really like to make um, A's where the first little area stands out because um, there's not really another area on a lowercase A to make it pop like that. So <clears throat> I just have been doing it like this and it looks really cool. It does give it a really cool... Um, effect.
all right for the sake of time I just went ahead and finished up um, all my little erasing so um, I hope that you kind of got an understanding of where you should be erasing and also you'll see that I did um, turn my background down because it just and ended up being easier to see um, my lettering and get I don't know get better lines I guess so then I'm, now I'm going back in and I'm turning the opacity back up on that layer. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you now is I just turned down the opacity because um, it just was a little bit easier to see. So now we're going to go in and do our highlights. So we're back on our mermaid brush. We're using it for this whole project. And I've gone in and just turned my streamline back up. So now I'm going to choose a white and then I ended up turning it all the way as bright white as it can go because <clears throat> I really like that effect. It kind of gives it that jelly roll um, gel pen kind of effect. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to pretend that our light is coming from up here in the top left, um, which you can do it from any direction. I'm just super confident in doing it at the top left. It's just how I've always shadowed. Um, so that's how we're going to do it today. So you're going to want to make um, your brush obviously smaller than your lettering and I'd say less than half the size of whatever you lettered at and then you're just gonna go in here and um, create little highlights on the top left hand sides of each um, line or letter so I'm probably gonna speed the video up just a bit um, here just so we can get through it um, if you are having trouble with shadowing or figuring out where the shadows should go or the highlights I'm sorry highlights if you're having trouble um, figuring out where the highlights should go um, gosh I really don't at this time um, know how to help you with that um, it kind of is just something that's always clicked with me and I just really could imagine like the light um, shining, you know, like if you held a flashlight to, <coughs> excuse me, to your project, um, and imagined where the light would hit first. That's what I do. Now, I do not know why um, my pencil's been doing that lately, but I'll get this, that like bubbling effect <coughs> on my lettering, and I have no idea what does it. it. Might be something to do with the sensitivity, but I just have to figure it out. Okay, well you guys enjoy. I'll be back when we're done with our highlights.
Okay, so we're all done with our highlights, and I'm just going to go back in here to the layers panel and turn the opacity back up on my background. And here is where you'll see I ended up um, deleting that white layer because I just didn't like the way it turned out. Um, I'm sorry for all the shakiness. I'm trying out that new camera uh, setup. So, okay, so I've duplicated my lettering layer. I'm going to go in and I'm going to choose um, a color to be my shadow, my drop shadow. We're going to select the layer, fill the layer. Then we're going to use the selection tool and we're going to just drag it down a little bit see how um, I can move that back layer. Then we're going to go down and turn down the opacity. I usually don't mess with the blur very much, but um, I do a little bit here. Usually I just like to turn down the opacity and it kind of gives me that soft look I'm looking for. So I did turn down the um, opacity and then turned up the Gaussian Blur until I got just a real subtle um, shadow effect. So here it is, you guys. I hope you loved it. And if you have any questions, let me know. Um, make sure to subscribe so you can keep up to date with all my tutorials. And thanks again. Happy crafting!